our against our identity, tries to destroy our heritage, history, architecture, and culture. During the 200 days of the war, the invaders committed more than 500 war crimes against the objects of the Ukrainian cultural heritage. The Chernihiv Central City Library suffered serious damage from aerial bombardment by Russian troops. Retreating from Suma region, the Russian army set on fire the main building of the Koenig Manor. The Okhtyrka Museum of Local History, the Ivank History, the Ivankiv District Historical and Local History Museum, and the Grigori Skovoroda National Literary and Memorial Museum were completely destroyed. More than 150 objects of cultural heritage were destroyed or damaged. More than 900 objects of cultural infrastructure were damaged. Despite the war, thousands of artists remain in Ukraine and continue to work. We do everything to preserve our culture, our soul. Let's protect, let's preserve, and win. So, 329th day of war, 8 millions of people left, around 4 millions came back. It's overall over 1,000 of cultural uh, objects and sites destroyed or damaged. Museums, theatres, libraries, music schools, architectural and archaeological sites. Missiles directly targeted towards Ivankiv Museum of Maria Primachenko and Skovorodinivka. So I would like Alexander Tkachenko to share his thoughts on the role of culture and cultural heritage during this war, the role of culture in the economy, and about the cultural partnerships with other countries. Please. Alexander, one minute. One minute, Alexander, we don't have any input. Let's check. Так, чуем. To Ukraine, uh, I can't not to mention today's sad news. Uh, thank you for paying tribute to Mr. Monastirsky and Ukrainians who died today in the crush. And I would like to say that uh, Minister of Internal Affairs was a big friend of culture. In his young years, he was a culture activist who preserved culture heritage. And due to the assistance of his ministry, his colleagues, uh, we did a lot to preserve culture heritage during the days of war. Uh, but this is but this is circumstances of this war, uh, and uh, I would like also to uh, say thank you to all panelists who participated in, in today's discussion. Uh, Mr. Simonas Kairis is a big friend of Ukraine. Thank you for. Uh, defending Ukraine on all levels. Uh, we uh, coordinate our activity with Minister of Economy due to uh, one sort of collaboration with WPP agency developing a program Advantage Ukraine to promote investment in Ukraine. Thank you for Google uh, for developing of uh, Google Arts project which allow uh, all people in the world to explore uh, Ukrainian culture heritage and thank you for Netflix not only for translate. One second, we don't hear you again. And you are back. And thank you also for Netflix for not only translating uh, the series and films in Ukrainian, but also of developing a program of uh, 
grant uh, for developing of series for Ukrainian producer and filmmakers. Of course, uh, due to the war, uh, we are focusing now on main issues uh, such as preserving Ukrainian culture heritage, uh, such as uh, helping Ukrainian artists to continue the activity in Ukraine. And because all theaters are working right now, uh, museums are working, and uh, I'm glad to uh, inform you that during the period of war, more than 50 premieres in theaters uh, took place. And of course, we are uh, fighting against Russian disinformation and defending uh, our information front. Uh, but uh, due to the uh, war, we also discovered a new opportunities. One of these opportunities is promoting Ukrainian culture abroad and developing different type of collaborations uh, that allow uh, people in Europe uh, to be aware how rich is Ukrainian culture heritage and why it's important to protect during the war. Because this war also is against our identity, which represents Ukrainian culture heritage. And uh, to be uh, powerful uh, during the war, to continue defending our history, language, and culture, definitely we need collaboration with all our partners and friends. Thank you very much, Alexander. One more question to you. Um, this year, the Davos Economic Forum started a few days before that with the Conference of the Ministers of Culture, where the main topic of discussion was uh, Baukultur, the strategic approach towards integration of the values of culture, beauty, harmony, the eco-friendly environment into this fragmented world. Do you think it's the right time right now to think about Baukultur values in Ukraine already? Uh, we are living in two worlds, worlds of war and worlds of uh, peace. While I was uh, passing Ukrainian roads, I saw how Ukrainians are rebuilding bridges and roads. And uh, we continue to live. That's why it's important to think and to speak about uh, future after the victory. And definitely the values of our culture are needed because we want to see not only rebuilding Ukraine, but a Ukraine which uh, can uh, develop something new, and this new is our culture, where we can live in harmony and peace. And that's why it's important also for culture sphere uh, to show the best examples of architecture, to speak about uh, uh, how we see the future of Ukraine, and for these purposes, uh, as the achievements of our culture are definitely needed. Thank you very much, Alexander. I fully support that there is no better time than now. Thank you very much and have a nice trip. So, Thank you for to all of you. Slava Ukraini. Hero and Slava. I will be following my next guest, uh, Simenas. That, that the question will be to you. Lithuania is uh, one of the Ukrainian greatest supporters, and uh, you yourself, being the Minister of Culture, have shown an outstanding example on the deep understanding the importance of the cultural aspects during this war. So, in your opinion, what is this war about? Is it about uh, Culture? Is it about language? Like, um, what are the reasons and the targets, in your opinion? So thank you, Anastasia, uh, for giving me the floor today. Uh, of course, uh, it's glad to see uh, Mr. Oleksandr Tkachenko uh, in this internet translation. And uh, for Lithuanians, uh, every things are very clear because we know what is this war about and we really feel and emotionally and in other aspects uh, in what situation Ukrainians are now and um, um, you know my life was uh, for example from my studies from the very beginning uh, dedicated for, for Ukraine beginning of my uh, for example bachelor job and, and, uh, and topic and um, yeah, and, and I think that um, it's very important that uh, such countries as Baltic countries, Poland, uh, stand together with Ukrainians and help in all the, uh, all the formats all over the Europe, world, and etc. because now is our time to say what's happening here. And uh, yeah, but um, 
Ukraine and Lithuania always were partners in culture and uh, creative sector and uh, this cooperation got even closer and more intense in uh, you know, this war period. And of course it's not a surprise for me. <laughs> and we have to remember that the war started not a year ago, uh, not during the Crimea occupation or even Maidan. It's a long-lasting war with this long history. And this war, firstly, is between those things who are culture and those who are not culture. A war between freedom and imperialism, between the country's right to decide and create their own future and totalitarianism. A war between truth, pluralism of opinions and freedom of speech, against lies, propaganda, and decades lasting falsification of the history. And from my point of view, culture plays a key role in this war. Russia named the main goal of this war destruction of Ukrainian culture, history, and identity. So it's the right moment for us to rethink the things that we were taken and is granted for decades. We must delete these images about so-called the, uh, the great culture of Russia or that image that Russia's culture is very, very special among others. I personally believe in diversity of different countries and their cultures. I believe in fact that culture is great from itself, not from state, government or even regime. We hear the, the request of your Minister of Culture, Mr. Alexander Tkachenko, to boycott Russian culture when Russia dropping bombs and killing innocent people. And as we understand, it was a reaction to a Putin signed decree on a humanitarian policy of the Russian Federation abroad. We understand that this decree of Putin is based on the lie. We agree that putting Russian culture under, as they call the mental quarantine, when Russian aggression lasts, is the emphatical, sensitive step of conscious people, conscious society, and the logical reaction towards the contexts that we have now. Russia uses its culture as a weapon. It doesn't mean that we will go to destroy or burn the box or delete the music we are not barbers. It's not about us. It's not about civilized world. But it's a very good chance now to rediscover our inner cooperation, to find out the diversity as well as common narratives, grounds, values, and to strengthen it. In this mental quarantine, maybe it's a very good moment to know more about classics, for example, from Ukraine, Baltic states, Poland, how many of them we know. I want to use our time to getting know better each other instead of feeding Russian propaganda with the big questions about great culture and how we can cooperate more. I always inviting or sometimes insisting uh, from our foreign partners to share the stage with Ukrainian artists because every exhibition, every performance, Every concert or play everywhere in the world by Ukrainian artists is like a very clear statement or living testimony that country is alive, country is fighting, country is strong and will win. Digital cooperation of CCI sector is a very important to see the context of the newest technology trends, NFTs, virtual augmented reality or artificial intelligence opens new opportunities for creators, for creative expression, spreading internationalization and the monetization of creativity. The CCI sector is undergoing an intense digital transformation and Ukraine and Lithuania can work together share best practices and knowledge to prepare for possible future scenarios. Our text has no national borders or boundaries. It is very important to think now about the future. Lithuania will provide full support to Ukraine on its European path 
and Lithuania is ready to help for Ukraine cities to become a European capital of culture, we will support Ukraine in the elections for the UNESCO World Heritage Committee, and we also express our support for creation of a common European fund to support Ukraine's culture sector at the European Union level. Taking the advantage of the funding mechanisms and tools that already available, the Creative Euro program, the training program for cultural heritage professionals, the newly, newly created Davos Baukultur Alliance. Day before yesterday, 29 countries of this format supported the joint statement and the idea that it must and can be directed towards the sustainable reconstruction of Ukraine. We need to prepare to coordinate the efforts and to cooperate with Ukraine public and private sectors, ensure the maximum use of local resources, protecting and restoring of cultural heritage, as well recognizing Ukrainian leadership in this process. The first day after the war could be the day we all start rebuilding Ukraine in a spirit of high quality Baukultur. We had good discussions with international partners that culture is a key element in restoring the country, cities, as it ensures that life is back. It is a source of economic growth and post-war healing. Culture rebuilds communities and social cohesion. And finally, let me say that I believe that we will together open a new ways of acting, new opportunities for all of us together with Ukraine and Ukrainian people all over the world. Thank you for your attention and Slava Ukraini. Wow, that was really outstanding speech. Thank you so much. You are really the greatest, our supporter, and we appreciate that greatly. Just a little question. Um, You've initiated this declaration on Ukraine at the Bau Kultur, the, the Ministers of Culture. So I, I know that at the very beginning there weren't so many of supporters to sign that declaration, but at the very end, as you mentioned, that was 29 countries which signed. So what, what happened there in the middle? Was there any kind of change? And do you think there is a change in general of the appreciation of uh, culture? Uh, you know, I think the worst thing is... Um this situation that people or countries becoming more and more tired because when you, I don't know, uh, say on your couch or sofa in the middle of the Europe or west or south of the Europe, this war looks that is uh, somewhere very far from you. And uh, I think quite a lot of people in uh, uh, all over the world will think that Russia is quite a normal country with a big composers like Tchaikovsky or, or the writers or people from theater beginning from, I don't know, Dostoevsky to Chekhov and uh, it's so some can, kind of... Can you of, survive yeah. the new year without the nutcracker? Uh, our national uh, opera and ballet theater just announced before a few days before the Davos Forum that they take all the ballads or, or other music from, from their list um, uh, and we call this not to cancel but to stop just to think uh, what's happening. But returning back to the question, when we arrive here and what, when was the deadline of how many countries will choose the declaration, we just came with a 12. And, um, and we, we, we felt this atmosphere that, okay, we support Ukraine, but why it's always, why are you always just uh, emphasizing this question? But I think uh, with the great leadership also, uh, with the um, uh, pre president of uh, Switzerland, uh, Mr. Berset, um, with, um, with the big floors, for, for example, for, for, for me personally or for other colleagues from, from that format, I just felt that step by step, when we have have meetings and we have direct communication between each other and for that reason it's very important for the Ukrainian officials, politicians to participate in such formats lively because at uh, that atmosphere is not so easy just to say that we can, I don't know, uh, not support some things. And uh, But the final, yeah, the, the final uh, result was 29 countries, even the in last minute Serbia for example, and uh, eight international non-governmental organizations who supported the declaration where is the two main things uh, solidarity with Ukraine and uh, thinking about this rebuild because 
Mr. Alexander mentioned about the bridge it's all etc but uh, bridge itself is nothing uh, bridge with the people with understanding of our spaces and places around us is the key element and it's also uh, the way to come back to uh, to your not just uh, living but to back to your normal life like a human Thank you so much. Being there myself, I feel a little bit connected to that kind of victory we've got with you with the 29 signatures. Thank you so much. So um, I'll be moving towards the partnership in, uh, between uh, government and business right now. So Marta, Google is uh, one of the companies heavily supporting Ukraine and that started far before the war. And uh, for sure, we feel that even more with the greatest um, efforts from your side uh, during the past 11 months. So we have together launched, as the minister mentioned, a dedicated page at the Google Arts and Culture. Um, Ukraine is here, telling about uh, Ukrainians' culture, music, history, architecture, um, and nature. Um, it definitely had the greatest success there on the web. So, um, but we also know that the uh, Minister of Culture is not the only one minister you are in partnership with, definitely, and we are thanking you for your support. Um, what I would like to ask you is, uh, what exactly your motivation there? Like, uh, cooperating, we are uh, not paying anything, you are doing that for us, you are doing a lot for the uh, heritage, the cultural heritage preservation and digitalization as well. So how, how exactly do you think our cooperation will be as well in, in the future and what is the most valuable for you in there? Thank you so much. And before I go into responding to your question, I just want to make sure that one thing in this panel will be loud and clear. Um, you would expect me to talk about technology, which I'm going to do in one second, but technology can be best used in the hands of the best people, and without that factor, um, technology would not suffice. And the presence of the, of, the house, of the Ukrainian house in Davos, the program, what you're doing with the exhibitions online that we're going to, um, to talk about are the, um, are the testament of your resilience, something that we admire, the headspace you're finding to continue the discussions. At the time, your country, your cities, your streets are being aggressively attacked. And I want to applaud everyone who made this house happen, who brought this panel together. Um, and that's, uh, that's the key and the, the platform, then companies like my company can come in and try to do great things together, but that's just part of a bigger picture. To your question on motivations, Google's mission is to index all the information universally um, available and make it globally accessible and useful. When um, before the war, throughout the war, and after the war, there has been, there is, and there will be interest in the Ukrainian heritage. Needless to say that when the war started, unfortunately for tragic reasons, um, Ukraine has been top of, man, top of mind of everyone um, globally. So we, of course, felt this is the right moment when, you, when we need to bring in more. We need to pa partner with you, with the Ministry of Culture, with, with 10 plus um, other institutions. And um, in the, before, before the war, that was, of course, the richness of Ukrainian um, culture. And we were responding to different um, needs. Um, as a reminder, it was throughout the pandemic when President Zelensky was encouraging Ukrainians to look at digitized scans when, when there was a request to stay at home. So the technology and the partnership we had with the public sector was serving a different purpose. Of course, at the time of war, many more things come to mind. Many of the artifacts we saw in one of the videos that we will not be able to see anymore in the shape as we've known that, we had known that before um, the war, you can go up online and see them. They're going to be useful to those who will be trying to rebuild them. If the communities will be deciding that maybe something else should be there, you will still be able to go up online and check um, what things look like, needless to say, the value um, the value of the, of, the, of the Ukrainian culture that to many globally 
is new when things are available on um, global platforms. So at, at Google, we've never hesitated whether this is the right thing to do or whether we need any specific motivation. It just felt that this is, first of all, meeting the expectations of Ukrainian users in country and globally and um, all our other users. And, and I think the, the value of partnerships with the Ukrainian government, with Ukrainian institutions, nonprofits, really speaks for the perspective of what's going to be the day after, what's going to come um, after the war. The, the agility of, of the Ukrainian innovation ecosystem, um, the courage, the appetite for, for innovation. If we're getting this at the time of war, what are we going to see when the war is over? And I think, um, I think while we're surrounded by grief, by tragedy, these are the positive things we're holding on to, um, supporting Ukraine, working with our Ukrainian peers, and I and I just hope that uh, this is a path to coming out of the war. I hope as soon as. Uh, possible and on behalf of Google I just want to emphasize that we will continue working with you we're looking forward to what are the many ways new ways always um, we can continue partnering on Thank you so much. And I would also to mention that uh, local Ukrainian team is amazing and they're great supporters and I really thank them very much. And unfortunately, we had to cancel the um, uh, event on, on the launch of uh, Google Arts and uh, Culture Ukrainian page due to heavy shelling, which we had in uh, Kiev at that day. And, uh, the electricity cut, but uh, nevertheless, we are expecting for the new and the next stages to come in and to explore, to, to let the possibility for, for all the world to, for, um, to explore even more about the Ukrainian culture. Thank you so much. So, we are uh, moving from um, the government to even more commercial uh, sector. From October 2021, Netflix launched the Ukrainian interface. Uh, and uh, since that time, you're continuing uh, to add on the Ukrainian content. Um, well, as probably all of you know, uh, the film industry involves a lot of different stages of uh, production and post-production and editing and so on and so on. So I would like to tell us a bit more on um, um, the, is there a place for the investment into Ukrainian markets right now? And do you think of uh, any possible uh, further enlargements uh, work in uh, Ukrainian market? And what's overall your feeling about the particularly creative industries? Thank you, Deputy Minister. And I would just begin by <clears throat> echoing Marta's comments about how fantastic it is to collaborate with the team at the Ministry of Culture and also Ministry of Digital Transformation and many, many others in Ukraine in these incredibly difficult times and during the war. Um, as as uh, Anastasia mentioned, Netflix has launched its Ukrainian language interface not terribly long ago, so we're still in relatively early days in, uh, in Ukraine, and we're really honored to be part of this extremely important uh, conversation. We see Ukrainian films, series, and documentaries as really essential parts of Ukraine's cultural heritage, and I'm happy to speak a little bit more about that in the next few minutes. I'll be, I'll be brief. Um, firstly, on the Ukrainian language user interface, um, this is something that's been been up and running for just over a year now. Of course, uh, subbing and dubbing is an intensive process, and we started even a couple of years prior to 2021, always working with Ukrainian top-notch dubbing studios to make this possible. Um, now, the U Ukrainian language interface is available for Ukrainian speakers, not only in Ukraine, but around the world. So it's really an exciting step for, for us in the country. And we continue to add more and more international films and series that are dubbed into Ukrainian and subtitled into Ukrainian every single week, every single month. So you'll see more and more of that to come. At the same time, we're continuing to invest in content licensing. So we're buying 
uh, rights for Ukrainian films and series. So there are some really well-known titles, of course, the very powerful documentary Winter on Fire, which we've had on Netflix for, for quite a while now. We took an additional step and put it on YouTube globally in March of 2022. We have the beloved series Servant of the People, which is also on Netflix. Um, I'm sure many of you in the audience have, have heard of this series and a few of the, the stars in it. Um, so both Winter, Winter on Fire and Servant of the People are in the top 10 on Netflix in multiple countries around the world. So to Minister Tkachenko's earlier point, uh, we're definitely increasing the visibility of Ukrainian stories around the world. But we're also investing in a diverse range of Ukrainian um, films and series. So obviously the well-known ones that I just mentioned, but also uh, in just in recent months, films like Rhino, uh, Sniper, White Raven, Maxim Osa, and even Amber Cops. So we want to have a diverse range of, uh, of, of films and series. Uh, and we're gonna, you're going to see more and more content licensing in 2023. And then the last thing I'll mention is the <coughs> initiative that Netflix uh, kicked off with local partners, Ukrainian Film Academy uh, and House of Europe. So basically we want to show our support for the audiovisual sector during time of war. Our initiative is very humble in the face of the incredible needs that the industry and the country are facing, but we wanted to show our short, medium, and long-term support. So basically we're doing three things. We are uh, providing, we have already provided $15,000 grants to about 50 project teams so they can get their series, film, or documentary started. So 16 of each documentary, film, and series category. Uh, we want to make sure the pipeline is um, is robust because it takes several years to get a film or series on screen. So we want we didn't want um, time to be wasted, notwithstanding uh, the war. The second thing is to provide 100 grants of a thousand euros each to members of the audiovisual sector so they can continue professional development during the war. And the third is to work with international audiovisual experts to provide some educational courses for the Ukrainian industry during the war. And we did. Did not want this to be a one-off initiative. I'm happy to confirm today that we'll be continuing the support in 2023. And we'll be continuing to work with the Minister of Culture, Deputy Minister Bondar, um, and, and many, many others to share details in the near future. And we stand with the audiovisual sector and we stand with Ukraine in, in this incredibly difficult time. Um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Alex. And uh, I would like to mention that I really appreciate your being very reactive and responsive on all the outstanding and extreme issues which sometime happens. Thank you so much. And uh, we really appreciate that uh, you support uh, uh, creative industries, especially those people who are staying in our country who have not left. And uh, this is uh, really very, very important. So um, I'm approaching my uh, final speaker today. And this is something uh, what we've left for the desert. So um, as we've started our discussion with uh, culture and uh, have moved through the business to the uh, economy, uh, it clearly shows that there is a very tight connection in between those spheres. So last year, Minister Alexander Tkachenko um, met Mark Reed, who is the CEO of WPP. That's a huge multinational communications and advertising uh, company with 109,000 employees working in 100 countries. Amazing. Huge. So um, together with the minister, we, they came about the idea on um, advertising and promoting the dramatic changes which uh, are presented by the Ministry of Economy at the time of war. So this is how basically the project Advantage Ukraine was born. There was an outstanding launch uh, uh, this uh, September at uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange opening ceremony, uh, as well as the enormous amount of uh, various uh, creative promotions and quite brave communications around the world. So, Alexander, tell us a bit more on uh, what is on the investment menu right now in Ukraine. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. And first of all, I wanted to thank uh, 
first of all, the Ukraine House, Davos, for hosting us, for making this happen, for the things that you're doing and for your contribution to promoting Ukraine. I want to thank uh, Ministry of Culture, Information Policy, uh, Mr. Minister Kachenko and to Anastasia in particular for, for engaging us to this uh, marvelous concept uh, which is actually transforming to the practical actions that we're all witnessing today. Um, I'm also uh, thanking uh, the panelists. I want to thank uh, Simonas for the continuous support of uh, Ukraine and it's really important to have international partners that uh, prove uh, that uh, friendship is uh, something uh, which is of a big value and we're going to be grateful for that for a long time. I want to thank Google for supporting Ukraine and the culture means and also for supporting the Advantage Ukraine campaign. We know that uh, a substantial amount was dedicated for the Google Ads promotion, which we all going to launch pretty soon. So uh, thank you for this continuing support. Also for the Netflix, uh, supporting Ukraine, and um, uh, we in the Ministry of Economy uh, care about the private sector and the small and medium enterprises. So one of our like favorite kits that we also uh, uh, always try, you know, to to, uh, to to nurse, to navigate, and so the more opportunities uh, you are creating and the, the people like you are creating, the better. And I know that USAID, for instance, is also supporting the script writers that are translating. Uh, uh, international movies uh, into Ukrainian, which is also really, really great and important move. Um, uh, so, moving on to the advantage Ukraine. So, um, uh, really, there was uh, enormous opportunity that was offered by the Minister Tkachenko and, uh, and the WPP, who are the great professionals, and we admitted uh, that they know how to do their job. The idea was actually to, to start talking to the international business community about Ukraine, uh, not to distract uh, the attention from the war, but also, you know, to um, um, to add another focus because. Um, when you talk to international investors and the businessmen, uh, the first thing you hear all the time, well, yeah, guys, you get prepared, and then once the war is over, we're going to talk. So, right? This is not something that we want to hear. We want them uh, to be engaged now. We want them to start thinking about us now. Uh, we want to be in the agenda at the moment, and uh, we have all the rights to be there. First of all, uh, investment preparation process is very time and effort consuming. And so uh, since the victory is very near and we all sense it, we all feel it, we, we keep getting good news from the battlefront. And so we understand that the war is eventually going to be over with our victory. And we don't want uh, the international business to waste this uh, uh, moment. Uh, so we encourage them to consider Ukraine as the platform for their potential business development. And, um, and here's why because we are, uh, first of all, we we offer them very skilled and educated labor, uh, which has always been there, and they're ready to take care of uh, every objective, any objective literally that you could think of. Uh, we offer them... Um, turnkey solutions, uh, like accommodating them from development sites in the industrial parks with, uh, with utilities connections, with tax incentives, like uh, you can, now you can bring the equipment without import VAT, without customs duty, uh, which, is, uh, which is really uh, uh, putting Ukraine uh, standing out uh, and uh, comparable to uh, to the other countries that are promoting uh, investments uh, in, in, in their uh, th uh, their homes, uh, we also offer the the turnkey uh, kind of financing package structure solutions because uh, recently we managed to. Uh, to secure uh, the, the war risk insurance, which is really important, that gives comfort to the investors from institutions like MIGA, Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency, which is part of the World Bank uh, family. Uh, they're issuing uh, insurance policies that I must say are pretty affordable because uh, we already set up a couple of pilot projects. They're about to get uh, their offers uh, confirmed by the board. 
Um, Development Finance Corporation from U.S. has recently waived uh, the requirement for um, for the U.S. content, which used to be the case when they were OPEC. Now they support any investor, even those who have some dry powder in Ukraine, ready to reinvest. And they also give direct lending, export credit coverage, and the war risk insurance as well. So uh, we encourage all the investors to consider these instruments and to uh, pay much attention to them. Um, we have uh, um, concessional lending uh, from IFIs, and they're always there, and they've been our great partners like uh, EIB, IFC, World Bank, EBRD. They dedicated big amounts, billions of dollars that can turn with a multiple to even more billions because uh, they usually finance in consortium with, uh, with other financing parties. And uh, all this is available in Ukraine. And so we really encourage the investors to come. As uh, Anastasia properly mentioned, uh, we launched this campaign in September. That was a great event. Uh, uh, New York Stock Exchange hosted us. That was a great chance for us to um, to s start with a loud uh, message to the world that Ukraine is open for business. That uh, again, as I mentioned, we don't want them to treat us uh, as the country that is only fighting for its freedom and for the democracy in the world, but also as the country that is delivering huge amount of opportunities. Uh, and uh, we're, we will always be there. And I think that I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that Ukraine is the next big thing. Um, so we, uh, as I said, that was that was a great event. It, it raised a lot of attention. Due to WPP, uh, we managed to create a pretty good information campaign. Uh, like the, the whole world uh, seen the advantage Ukraine promotion uh, on, on the buildings, on the billboards, airports, railway stations. Uh, we had great media coverage with uh, prominent uh, newspapers, magazines, uh, uh, and we continue doing this. Um, this campaign resulted in pretty substantial results, uh, uh, like lots of visitors to the platform. Uh, more than 500 uh, relevant applications. We received much more, but many of them were a <laughs> little irrelevant. So, <laughs> but uh, the 500 ones uh, are the leads that we're now converting into the real interests, and uh, uh, we uh, we managed to um, uh, gather the, the team of uh, former investment banking, private equity, and big four professionals that are supported by USAID. And uh, we also work uh, closely with Ukraine Invest. I'm happy to see Sergei Tsivkic here as the, one of uh, the attendees. Um, the way we see it is that uh, we, are, uh, um, we are promoting the origination. We, we collect and aggregate the projects. And uh, we um, um, basically uh, engage those investors, interested parties, lenders. And uh, we're happy to have Ukraine Invest as the reliable partner who is then able to navigate those guys in, in, in Ukraine and Ukrainian realities and help them uh, build up, set up the business in Ukraine uh, without any obstacles and issues, uh, which, uh, which is also really important for us. Uh, so uh, currently we, uh, we managed to uh, consolidate, uh, like first of all, the approach that we, we have there, we created sort of like an investment menu which, uh, which accommodates a uh, number of investment opportunities. They are a little bit hypothetical, but they are driven uh, by um, by the things, uh, by, by all those advantages that specific region, specific industry has, and uh, uh, those opportunities are literally for hundreds of billions of dollars, and I think they're all achievable within the course of a number of decades. Uh, well, at the same time, we're gradually uh, filling them in with the real projects, and so far we managed to um, uh, to prepare more than 50 projects for more than 8.6 billion dollars worth, like 10 industries. Uh, this includes the agriculture, food processing, which is really important for us, as now we face the the food crisis. 
and everybody figured out that Ukraine being the biggest agri producer, uh, uh, having a bottlenecks with logistics is actually facing a challenge that uh, a lot of the export turnover is dropping, which means that we need to focus on the, on the deeper processing. We need to focus on another level of uh, of, uh, of food uh, and agri business. Um, so we have numerous opportunities there, from as I said, from agriculture, food processing to minerals to uh, upstream gas extraction to military tech to I don't know, like uh, industrial production furniture production, whatever, and uh, we're here, we're open for business, as I said, we're really grateful for this collaboration, cooperation, uh, we encourage you to visit Advantage Ukraine, the Ministry of the Economy is always there to support the investors directly, please refer to Ukraine Invest uh, once you need to get the support in Ukraine, when you need to navigate the Ukrainian realities. So, and welcome to Ukraine, and uh, we're happy to be here to help you. Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. Oh, actually, one important thing is that we have some sweets uh, that are, uh, uh, with, uh, uh, yeah, they are, they are branded with Advantage Ukraine, so this is just to give you a little bit of an aftertaste and just to, yeah, just to remember us, so they're over there. Okay. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, I guess that we've definitely used this platform for a proper product placement. AdvantageUkraine.com, please, everyone. So, um, while, while we'll be finishing in here, and um, I would like to thank you all the speakers today. Uh, I guess that uh, cultural values is something what determines our behavior, not at the times then everything is fine and simple, but at those times which are dark. So, uh, we are here not to say that we are victims. We are here to say that we are fighters and that we will win. Slava Ukraini! Slava. Slava.